Welcome back to the big board. Welcome back to the world's most professional, high quality, greatest production values, video blog on wargaming in the universe. Or uh, you could just know that I have the stand for my camera on a uh, on a much larger stand today and I was so lazy I couldn't be bothered taking the little attachment off and putting it on my tripod and giving you the privilege of a close-up today. So you're going to look at this video from here or leave. It's all good. What are we looking at? We are looking at, where's the lid for the box? We're looking at Saipan and Tinian from Legion Games. Can you see that? There it is. Uh, this is the Island War series. This is the first volume uh, in the series. All the artwork is done by uh, Randy, who uh, runs Legion Games. And that'd be my first observation here is that uh, I, I found the the map ocean to be very bland. I really like the, uh, the island terrain, the look and feel of it. It's good. <coughs> uh, Larger counters, they're the 5 8 uh, size, I think they are. Uh, nice large hexes. Here are our marines. Here, uh, decent thickness on the counters as well. They're nice, uh, nice and easy to pop out. There are a number of charts in the game as well. And it's an interesting little conundrum uh, trying to build systems around the Pacific Island warfare that went on. Particularly at the sort of at the what I would call the tactical slash grand tactical scale, and here we're dealing with twelve hour turns and half mile, uh, half mile uh, hexes, and so an unusual scale, because if if you're going tactical, you're usually down in the two hundred and fifty meter scale and twenty minute turns or hour turns, whatever the case may be. I've played another system that was one kilometer hexes and uh, I forget what the time scale for that was it might have been a third of a day or something like that but that that was challenging I, I had some issues with the way that time and geography worked together uh, particularly when you started to doing started doing some ranged fire and things of that nature so I'm, I'm, I'm more hopeful here that this somewhat more abstract system will give us some flavor of the challenges to be faced by the Marines and by the Japanese defenders. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of stuff is uh, you know, relegated to a uh, 1d6 result on a table, so bonsai attacks, napalm attacks, uh, whether you can retreat before combat or not, uh, disruptions on the landing table, interdiction for air, any aircraft, obviously enough. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't mind that. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, bonsai attacks are interesting in that if you get through this 1d6 roll where you're going to probably lose some uh, portion of your forces as the Japanese player, if you get through that roll and still have enough units left to attack with, uh, you, you're going to be doubled. Every, every, every uh, combat factor is going to be doubled, excluding Artie, of course. And so that uh, is, a, is an interesting little mechanic uh, in here for the for give the Japanese something to do other than sit there and be a punching bag. Uh, I haven't got all the fortifications laid out yet. I've got them over here. I've got to place all those. Uh, you can't really see if you can see those or not because, like I said, it's a high-quality production here. But here are the... Here are the um, yeah, that's just not going to focus. There we go. So that's a level two um, coastal defense location. Uh, so one mapper landings uh, have to come in at the, the designated beaches, which are these arrows, and then there's a holding a, a landing planning box over on a chart to the right that you can't see. And basically, during the, the, the standard sequence of play, which is, in essence, uh, let me just, before I go shoot my mouth off, say what it is, I'll read it to you so we get it right. Yeah, you do your bombardments and stuff first, and it's a move, combat, exploit, and night exploit. 
but in the landing phase, we're gonna uh, drop one wave in the movement phase, and then we'll drop another wave in the exploit phase, and then there's an exploit phase reserve. There's a third wave that can then come in subject to stacking limitations and things of that nature. Pretty straightforward rule book, uh, black and white. At first I couldn't see, you know, there's no images in the rules for the counters, but uh, there is a nice little terrain effects chart with a unit counter information chart on it that is very clear and very concise that works nicely. Uh, so I, I've got some high hopes for the game. We're playing the Saipan scenario. Probably should have played Tinian first, but because I because I uh, was reading uh, Hornfisher's book and Toll's books on uh, this this particular campaign, I wanted to, uh, for some reason, I, I had a fascination with Saipan. I, I can't really give you a good rational reason why. I would have preferred Tinian, I think, uh, now that I've looked at it, because it's a much smaller scenario. It would have been a nicer way to get started. Uh, so there's landing rules, there's some bonsai rules, there's artillery rules. There's abstraction of air, it's a 1d6 situation with a number of points per turn that you can use. Uh, let's see, the Zocks are interesting in that uh, nothing really has, uh, well, Zocks don't take effect until you try and leave the hex. Uh, units can be uh, adjacent to each other and be in each other's zone of control, and you can negate each other's zone of control for supply reasons and things like that but you enter the hex that you're going to uh, assault or melee, uh, and then neither side will have a zone of control. So that's going to cause some interesting interplay when it comes to retreats and things of that nature. We'll see how that all pans out. Combat is also a little funky in that uh, each unit, it's not just six, uh, six factors, right? I don't know if you can see that. Ooh, there we go. It's not just six factors. What we're going to do here is uh, they're taking step, everything's taking basically step losses. So we're going to put a marker underneath each counter. And depending on the type of counter, they're going to get uh, between one and four, I think it is. Or maybe, uh, maybe it's the, that's right. It's the actual, um, I'm sorry, it's the actual combat value of the unit. And so we're going to reduce very incrementally here. And I think that's why the game is going to run 50 turns. Uh, so we'll probably not get 50 turns done, but we'll have a whack at it. Uh, pretty decent landing rules in here, not too complicated. It's got a, a wide range of different vehicle types, Amtraks and Ducks and stuff like that, that we're going to have to uh, use. And they have different capabilities, but nothing too onerous. Engineers and armor will give you mainly just give you DRMs on combats and things of that nature, as well as adding their own combat value. So this is not really a shrink grip and it's not really an introduction to the game. It's more just a quick look at, hey, here's the, here's the deal. I think we're, uh, I think if, as far as a rule book goes, while it clocks in, the base system clocks in at 20, 24 pages, and then there's one and a half pages of rules basically for each of the two scenarios. And then the setup, setup charts and stuff. But here's Saipan. Here it's you know two pages, two and a half pages of, of rules. Nothing super exclusive in here. Just some weather stuff. Uh, fire support coordination was poor for the uh, Japanese, so there's some special rules around that. Um, there's some amphibious capabilities and USM deals with USMC fatigue at some point. The Marines are going to have to take a four-turn break uh, <clears throat> as, they, as they go through their acclimation and uh, weariness recovery from uh, a, what was a very heavy, very bloody, highly attritional campaign. So this will be fun to kind of get into and see if it really pulls out the flavor of what I've read about and, and uh, represents more accurately some of the conditions that the folks faced when they were fighting on both sides. Uh, not expecting a TCS, you know, the tactical combat system level of detail or of complexity or of uh, uh, theme here either, really. You know, that was a platoon scale game with much, uh, much finer, more granular uh, detail on the scenarios and on the, the um, 
order of battle and, and all that sort of good stuff. Here and these these setups here, we're, we're given a fair bit of flexibility to set up within zones and uh, within a number of hexes of, of where units are placed. So there's no strictly heavily historical, this unit was in this hex at this time set up for the Japanese that I can tell so far versus you know the TCS system, which we clearly had uh, had uh, pretty detailed setups for the Marines that were on Bloody Ridge, for instance, or in Mantanakau at the river, uh, the river line where the, the Japanese were defending uh, against the, the American attack. Anyway, so that's a, kind of a waffle on about this, but we'll, uh, we'll get stuck into it over the next uh, day or two, and I'll send you some more information uh, as it comes. Cheers. Thanks for watching.